Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash ask reddit. This was posted by user Retcray. What oddly specific ask reddit question would need to be asked in order for you to tell a story you've been wanting to tell? What is the most unconventional item you've kept in the trunk of your car and when did you use it? A katana. It was a shitty dull thing that I'd purchased on eBay while in college. I ended up storing it in the trunk of my car, mostly because it wasn't allowed in dorms and I didn't have any place better for it, and it made for a great conversation starter when picking up guys. Okay, no it didn't. But I thought it did. Story time. My college roommate was getting married at the end of summer, but I couldn't get more than the day of at the wedding off, which meant driving halfway across the state on tiny ass roads in my piece of shit car. I got up around 3am, did my hair and makeup as a bridemaid in the ceremony, but stayed in normal clothes as the dress was with the bride. So I'm driving on these country roads and after one town a car starts following me. No big deal, there's usually multiple cars on the road after all. I didn't really speed because I was afraid my car would literally fall apart if I went over 65, but this guy just hung out behind me. By this point it's around 6 or 7am and I'm needing gas, coffee, pee break. So I pull over at the next gas station to take care of business. As I'm leaving the town, Lo and behold, the car is waiting just outside town, pulled over. As I pass him, he pulls out and starts following me again. By this point, I'm freaked out. The nearest large city is easily a couple of hours away, and this state isn't exactly known for its hospitality towards strangers. So I did what any sleep-deprived girl would do. I turned off the highway and onto the next back road, and started zigzagging to try to lose him. Guy stays on my tail. So, after a few turns, I did something I'm still proud of to this day. In one swift series of actions, I pulled over, popped the trunk, grabbed the sword, and marched my ass over to his car. I had no fucking clue what I was going to do at that point, but the look on this guy's face was priceless. He'd pulled over at first too, but then I started walking towards him, sword unsheathed. He sped out of there. I didn't see him again for the rest of my trip. Do you have nine kangaroos as pets? Yes, Reddit. Yes, I do. What is the strangest way someone has interrupted a wedding you have attended? My answer. My uncle wasn't too fond of the girl my cousin was marrying. My family arrived two hours early to help set up, so he spent the whole time drowning his sorrows in alcohol, trying to come up with some way, any way, he could halt this wedding and get his son back. Then it hit him. The perfect idea. He would confess his love to his son. Obviously you can't marry someone if they love someone else. Pleased with his foolproof whiskey fueled plan, he jiggled and wobbled his fat ass to the seat that was reserved lovingly for him. He plopped down onto the seat and waited to strike. I had the misfortune of sitting next to him in the noxious cloud of alcohol and body odour that he produced. So I had a front row seat to the strange thing that was about to happen. Fast forward to when vows were being exchanged, he was becoming more and more restless every second. He was running out of time. Without any warning, he hoisted himself out of his seat and yelled, I love you, Eric. Don't marry her. You are the love of my life. With his little drunken sausages pointed directly at my poor cousin, whose face instantly flushed. The room was so silent you could hear his tuck strain to keep his body from overflowing from its captivity as he wobbled in place, his finger still aimed directly at my cousin. Seeing no one was reacting to his pleas, he desperately screamed out, Marry me instead, buddy, before puking on the floor. He was escorted out of the building. I had to clean his whiskey puke up because my mom said it was somehow my fault my uncle was a crazy drunk. And the wedding continued on as planned. How do you feel about koalas? Man, I hate koalas. Talk about the most disappointing animal. They only eat eucalyptus, which has next to no calorific value and is actually poisonous to them. So they spend 23 hours a day sleeping because A, they have no energy to spend moving around and B, they're tripping their fucking balls off. So during this time, they just piss all over themselves, just in their sleep, just always dripping piss from their forked penises the one redeeming feature. So I was with this whole youth travel group in Queensland and we get to go hold a koala. I'm all excited, so we get there and they hand me this obviously piss soaked and grumpy ball of coarse fur. Did I mention they're not soft? Like, 
at all. I would put koala fur somewhere around woodchuck hair for softness. And on top of that, they have this huge bone plate down their back. Fucking bullshit! So they hand me this piss-soaked, coarse, hard ball thing with claws and then proceed to tell us about why koalas are endangered. My first guess was their habitat was being eroded or something. Turns out that they all have chlamydia and it's making them all sterile. They told me the ones in the park were all clean, but I really didn't want to get my first SCD from koala piss. Do you have any good first-hand stories about chickens? I grew up on a farm. Among other animals, we had about 150 chickens. One particular bird was purchased from a local chick hatchery once her laying days were over and released into our chicken coop. The bird decided my father was her personal lord and saviour for releasing her from the hatchery and followed him around any time we were outside. One winter, Dad was out breaking the ice in the watering troughs with the chicken following him around, poking her beak into his business and generally being in the way. When he got to the cow trough, she stood up on the lip watching as he broke the ice. Dad walked away for a moment and returned to faint splashing sounds. The chicken had fallen into the trough of near freezing water as he walked away, and when he returned he heard her last desperate struggle to get out. My father plucked this bird from the trough and carried her into the house. He took two of my mom's favourite towels and quickly towelled off the worst of the water, talking to the bird in soft tones the whole time. The chicken didn't respond, but did my dad give up? Oh no! He grabbed mom's hairdryer and began blow drying the chicken and massaging its chest, trying to prevent hypothermia from setting in. About five minutes into this, the chicken stops breathing. Without missing a beat, my father hands me the hairdryer commands, keep her warm, and proceeds to perform mouth to beak resuscitation. After a few breaths and continued chest massages, the chicken started breathing on its own, opened its eyes and tried to stand up. After that afternoon, this chicken began waiting outside the house for my father to come out for daily chores. She would let him pick her up and would jump, thrash, almost fly her way onto his shoulder any time he sat down where she could see him. What gag did you come that close to pulling off? I wore a tuxedo and an obviously fake moustache to the DMV for my new licence photo. The lady at the desk asked me, Is your moustache real? I said, Yes, of course it is. Through my smile, I could feel the cheap glue unsticking. Score! Got in line for the cameraman. Cool black guy in line looks at me, laughs and says, My man. I feel like a boss with sweaty palms. It is my turn now. Cameraman says, Is that real? I said, Yeah, it's real. I've been kicking myself for years for not asking. Is what real? He lets it go. I smile, hold my bow tie with two hands in the shape of the shocker and smile the shit eatingest grin ever. He snaps the photo. Put your hands down for this one. Sure, no shocker. This is awesome. Then his boss, Captain Grumps a lot, yells from across the room, Take that off! I comply. The cameraman is embarrassed and asks why I lied to him about the shag carpet on my upper lip. What have you managed to pull off when the odds were stacked against you? Well, I really wanted some chips at CVS, but the candy was also a good deal because it was after Valentine's Day. Being a man of great solutions, I decided to flip a coin. Heads? Well, that'll be chips. Tails? Also chips. If the coin lands on its side, I will get candy. Flip the coin in the air and it lands on the floor bouncing about. It then proceeds to roll up to the wall where it falls towards it, ending up on its side. I got the candy, but was sad. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed what you've heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.